Good morning, I'm welcoming you here to St. Paul's Church here at 445 Elmwood Avenue. We have this opportunity to gather together in the courtyard as we're doing and we're enjoying this fellowship with Jesus Christ. And we also invite you, of course, to participate by watching the video services that we have online every Sunday morning. But here we are enjoying another day of worship as family and friends, and we invite you to do the same. So with that, I say God bless you and all of us together. Welcome, welcome to St. Paul's. Paul's.
God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join with me in our confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God. 
We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord, and we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have now your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you have no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Here ends the second lesson. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but I, those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. On this Sunday, I would like to direct your attention to the writings of St. Paul. I would like to look at the book of Philippians, chapter 4, a couple of verses that are very pertinent for the day, where it says, beginning in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful selection of scripture. It just is unbelievable how Paul could maintain his positive attitude in the midst of turmoil. And I think of that as frustrating for Paul, as I think of today, what we're dealing with, and let's see, I think most of us, we have a hard time understanding what we're talking about, no? because, you know, we have one of these masks in here, we're not saying anything, you know. I bet you couldn't understand one word I said, could you? Frustrating, isn't it? That's what we're dealing with, frustrations, and that's what Paul is talking about in the lesson for today. We're dealing with a lot of frustrations and bent up anxiety and stress, and that's just the way it is right now. I think we've all experienced frustration at one time or another, and I'll have to admit that I think frustration is one of the most terrible things that a human being can deal with. And it doesn't need to be something life-threatening, difficult, or life-changing either for something to be frustrating. It can involve something very simple as a matter of fact. I think of the message in the church. And the church has a lot to say, but the basic message, and you get right down to it, is that we can be content and celebrate life with joy. We can be content and celebrate life with joy. St. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. You know, with all that we've had to put up with this, this virus and masks and going into the stores and not being able to understand people and having a difficult time breathing under the mask and everything that goes with it, I think this message is important for all of us today. Rejoice in the Lord. Nevertheless, in addition to the, to the virus, in addition to this coronavirus, which we've all heard so much about, in addition to that, there are all sorts of people in our congregation and throughout the world that are being involved with frustration, and they're frustrated not only by the problems that they have to deal with, but they're frustrated by others. They're, they're frustrated by the troubles of friends. They're frustrated by the troubles of family members and even their neighbors. Frustration. When is it ever going to end? That's another frustration. When is it ever going to end? You know, some of you have experienced frustration as a result of your jobs or maybe as a result of the people with whom you have to work. I don't know. I don't know what it's like out there right now. I'm blessed I get to work at the church here, and that's a pretty wonderful option for me. But some of you have had to undergo a tremendous transition in life with your jobs, and I feel sorry for you. Some of you are frustrated with everything that is going on around in, in home life, for instance, and, and perhaps Perhaps some of you are even frustrated just to get up in the morning and look in the mirror. You know, frustration. But I have good news for you. I really do have good news for you today. And the good news is that we can be content and celebrate life with joy. Because the way I see it, joy is not the absence of problems. Joy is the presence of God. Joy is not immunity from conflict and pain. Joy is a positive assurance that I can do all things through Him 
who gives me strength, as says St. Paul. I can do all things. I can conquer all things with which I have to come into contact. I can do it with the help of the Lord. Christianity, it's a simple message. It simply says that Jesus died on the third day he was raised. Died and raised again on the third day. And with all of that, it communicates to us the fact that whoever believes in him has a new relationship with God the Father. And if we have a new relationship with God the Father, in that we are forgiven and made whole and clean on account of Jesus Christ, then we have the assurance of eternal life. A life without stress. A life without frustration or complication. And how frustrating it is when that message of Christianity is confounded or poorly communicated. There we go. The word communication comes to mind. We experience a lot of frustration with communication, don't we? Parents, children, friends, relatives, employers, employees, you name them. People that too often are either misunderstood for what they have said or they have failed to properly communicate what's in their heart or in their mind. Frustration. Even God is on that list of being frustrated because of communication. God, in His love and in His mercy, has gone so far to properly communicate everything that needed to be communicated about salvation. God even included in that list the open tomb on Sunday morning, the third day, as mentioned earlier. God, in that open tomb on the third day, tried to communicate the ultimate fact of His love for humanity. Whoever believes in the Savior will have the same resurrection, will have the same gift of eternal life. He tried to communicate His love to people who would appear to have been from a different planet because they didn't understand a thing that was being said or they refused to listen. You know, if you think you've experienced frustration, think about God the Father and Jesus Christ. Think about God in Christ Jesus as you listen to John. John chapter 1, in the very beginning, talks about the, the Jesus Christ, the incarnate Christ. And in 10 and 11 he says, let me read it to you. Jesus, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not know him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. That's right. God in Christ Jesus was frustrated. God the Father was probably equally frustrated. You think, from the very beginning of time, going back into the scriptures, God the Father created a world, he created our first parents, put them in a perfect area to live, a perfect garden as it was called, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, communication broke off. Well, it was Adam and Eve's fault. People like to blame God. Why did he do that? It wasn't God's fault. Adam and Eve did what they were not supposed to do in the sight of the Lord. And in so doing, they lost their self-respect and they lost their trust of God. And it says in the scriptures that they then hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Simple as that. No need to pursue that. God, however, continued his efforts to communicate with people of this world. He didn't give up. He tried the prophets. Then, through Moses, he tried the Ten Commandments and gave them a new covenant and tried to explain to them what life was meant to be through his law. Then, after that failed, he used David. And David spoke to the world in poetry through the Psalms. And people still didn't understand what God was trying to communicate. Every form of communication possible, God used. And people refused to listen to what he had to say. They rejected the prophets. And sometimes as the, the parables continue, they, they even murdered the prophets, put them to shame. Talk about 
frustration. Martin Luther, our church founder, I love his, his blunt attitude at times. In a sermon that has been recorded in time, he said a long time ago, if I were God and the world had treated me the way it treated God, I'd have kicked the whole thing to pieces long ago. I like that. Luther knew frustration. He knew a lot about frustration. But the difference between God and the people of this world who become frustrated and angry is that God doesn't despair and God doesn't throw fits of rage as do people. As we're seeing so often now, as the homicide rates in the cities have gone up and up and up and up, and crime is at a height, people are stressed and frustrated, and they're throwing themselves into it with rage at times, sad to say. But that's not like God, not God our Father. Last Sunday we talked about the incomprehensible patience of God as He sends servants and servants and servants to the world. And today we also see that God is a God of love. God is patient. God is kind and compassionate. He doesn't give up on the world and He doesn't quit because of some frustration that someone really ticked Him off. He doesn't just walk away and close the door and say, I'm done with that. That's not like our God. Our God loves us. So he tried again. The prophets failed. So he tried again. This time he would appear in the form of a man. And he would take on human likeness. He would become tired. He would become exhausted. He would become hungry. He would become ostracized by many a people. He would become, well, we could just go on with the list and the list and the list because he was just like us and he had to deal with the same frustrations in this world that we deal with. His name is Jesus. The plan was that if people would get to know who Jesus was, then they would know who God is and they would see in this compassionate, loving Jesus the fact that God the Father will never abandon His people. The fact that God does not walk away from His people. The fact that He will extend Himself in every possible way to help anyone who calls on Him. Rejoice in the Lord always, says St. Paul. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. This is the Lord that we have. This is the God that we have. You know, if they could have only learned from Jesus that God the Father was there with his arms open as he even extended them on a cross for the sake of the world. And then being raised again on the third day, lifting up those same hands and showing them to the disciples to prove that he had been raised from the dead. If they could just have learned that God has not abandoned them. That would be probably the most important message we can get to maybe our elderly, maybe you, because there's nothing worse. I believe there's nothing worse. There's no greater frustration than feeling as though you've been abandoned. The feeling that no one out there cares whether you're dead or alive. That's the epitome of frustration. And it says in the scriptures that God will never leave us, God will never abandon us. And that's the message Jesus was communicating to the world. But they didn't understand Him. Which brings me back to the message for today, as we think of Jesus and all that He did. Be content and celebrate life with joy. You know, we never need to go it alone. I can repeat that. You never need to go it alone, whether you're at home, whether you're at school. 
whether you're in the playground or whether you're in a place of employment, whether you're in a hospital or wherever you might find yourself, you are never there alone. God is with you. God is watching over you and God will take care of you as you call on Him in prayer. Call on Him. Talk with Him. Speak with Him regularly. Tell Him your needs. Tell Him your frustrations. And then, if you're really frustrated some night and you can't get to sleep, as has happened to me on several evenings, count your blessings. Just turn your negativity off and count your blessings. And I guarantee that you will fall asleep before you're done counting all of your blessings. God is a God of love. He watches over us. And all He asks is that we believe in His Son as our Savior and we have the assurance of eternal life. And He returns to us our self-respect through the forgiveness of sins. Oh, take that back. He asks one more thing, doesn't He? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and might and mind. And then, Love your neighbor as yourself. We are to respect our neighbor and our loved ones as God respects us. And if we were to respect one another with that kind of a respect, we would not have the frustrations we're dealing with. And we would not have the homicide rates that we're looking at. And we would not see the anger on the streets that we see, or in the homes, or wherever it might be. God only asks that we love one another and respect one another and come to understand one another better. And in so doing, life will be more complete for you as it is for me. Listen one more time as we complete this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, May the transcendent peace of God that passes all understanding keep you ever close to Jesus Christ today, tomorrow, and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Please join with me now in the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the Mount of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in the prayer of the church. And on this day we'll have a special prayer for Mary Abernathy who underwent surgery this past week and is looking for recovery and asking for prayers. Also, we'll include Hannah Cooper, who by the grace of God celebrated her 90th birthday this past week. So for Hannah Cooper and for Mary Abernathy, we'll have a special prayer today. We bow our heads, we go to the Lord and we say, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for our church, St. Paul's. We give you thanks for the joy that we have at St. Paul's and for the continued success that we've had. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Bless us in the joy that we share. Bless us in the membership that we have. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who are supporting our church day by day by day. Strengthen them in the power of the Holy Spirit and continue.
continue to move them forward for the sake of our congregation. Bless Heavenly Father Anna Cooper, who celebrated her 90th birthday this past week. Bless her in every possible way and continue to give her good health and reason to live in joy. Heavenly Father, for Mary Aberdent, we have a special prayer this morning that she might recover completely from her shoulder surgery. Bless her, Heavenly Father, as she's worked so hard on the altar so many years. Continue to strengthen her that she might enjoy her life fully and completely with a complete recovery. Heavenly Father, for those who are dealing with the coronavirus, we continue to pray. Bless them. Those who have lost loved ones, comfort them. Those who are dealing with the sickness itself, strengthen them. And for those who live in fear of the, the virus, Heavenly Father, give us the belief that we are all right, we will be okay, and with you we can do all things, as St. Paul says. Be with us this day and always. Keep us always in mind, Heavenly Father, as you watch over the men and women of the service, and keep us ever close to Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we ask this. Amen. Amen. Um. 